has your creative process changed over like the past well year I mean we talk about the pandemic all the time um, and I'm sure you probably had to cancel a number of performances but have you noticed shifts in the way that you um, like engage with your practice mm -hmm. thank you for that question um, I have um, one one shift for sure was for me to think to think about the level of productivity that I had been committed to before the pandemic. Um, you know, the number of things that got canceled for me were were outrageous. Um, as you know, was the case for so many folks in in, in the arts period, um, or folks who are participating in the gig economy in any way. Um, but that like requirement to not just slow, but to stop. For me, value it was an opportunity to evaluate what that what that was, what what the volume of productivity needed to be for for the practice, and what was I out of balance? And I it's it I assessed that I was out of balance. Um, so how that shifted for me was one I started to reprioritize um, what that what the studio practice looks like um, and how much I emphasize that, right? So I have the, the privilege of having another space that I can work in that's not my home um, and found that super important. Um, whether or not that was like outside, I'm you know in Southern California, so being outside most of the time is possible, um, but having a place to go to that is, is not my home um, was really useful for me to to be able to like disengage sometimes. Um, what also changed, it's, it wasn't a change, but it was something that got clear is that I do have a commitment to live work um, mm -hmm. that I didn't want to find a way to all of a sudden make work that needed to be uh, virtual. Um, that similarly, as I said before, to, to other works and the development of other works, I'm having to listen to what it needs. And if a project is not calling for me to create it in a virtual way, then I'm not going to do that. So mm -hmm. if it means that I have to wait, um, or my, you know, the audiences are different, right? If the audiences are the witnesses that are passers by, or if the audiences are smaller, um, but to be able to uplift the way that the technology of my work is being communicated, what does it need to happen? Um, and for, for me, a part of what I, I think my particular medicine is or offering is, is, uh, is um, particularly communicated through the live. Um, I think there are components of my practice that work virtually and I've experimented with that. So that was a change of thinking more expansively about how there are parts of the practice that can live online. Um, and to honor the parts of it that don't and to not try to make the, my work something that it's not wanting to be. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that in the live, so it doesn't make sense for me to do that. Um, and, you know, even with being forced. And I'll lastly say a part of that came that any kind of situation, any circumstance that requires or that thrives off of the absence of our bodies is something that has to be questioned, mm -hmm. right? There's our erasures being um, monetized is something that we, sh we shouldn't actually settle into. So a part of it for me, that is a resistance of, of being erased from, from the public. Mm -hmm.